Today I'm going to talk about these two pictures. This one is called The Goblin Wood and this one is called Moonlight Over the Bridge. Very different pieces of work but also quite similar in some ways too. They're both moonlight scenes, they're both landscapes obviously and they're both pastel paintings and pastel is my absolute favourite medium. I just adore it. I do use other things as well. I love charcoal, oil paint, watercolour, all sorts of things, but I don't know why. There's just something really special about pastel. I think it'll always be my favourite. Anyway, this one, the Goblin Wood, is totally made up. It doesn't exist anywhere. It's entirely from my imagination. There is no such place. And I really like to do this. I like to create my own landscapes, my own worlds, as it were. But obviously, I'm looking at landscape all the time. I'm looking at trees, I'm looking at woodlands, I'm looking at forests. And I do think if you're constantly observing something, it becomes part of your subconscious and you find you develop a kind of knowledge of it. And then when you do want to make something up, you can just draw upon this knowledge and you find it's kind of just there. This one is also one of my earthlight trees. And my earthlight trees are a very big ongoing series of works for me where I depict trees, forests, woodlands, all glowing with their own earth light, their own energy, their own life force. Now, sometimes this is one tree on its own, sometimes a group of trees, or sometimes, as here, trees going along a lane. But wherever it is, I try to depict the light emanating from the base of one particular tree. So here, the light's coming from the big tree on the far side of the pathway, and it seeps over, illuminating the trees on the other side. And it makes a kind of circular motion. And the same thing happens in this one here. This time the circular motion from the arch of the bridge and the reflection. And I really like to do this in a piece of work because for me, I feel that it draws you, the viewer, into the work. But this is different. I didn't make this up, this is a very real place. This is somewhere my partner and I often go. Absolutely glorious old bridge. I think it was built in the 1700s, but very, very beautiful, very dilapidated, very overgrown, hard to get to. And it's like that, it's very, very thin. When you walk across it, you know, it's a little bit wider than that. You know, it's very, very narrow. It's so beautiful. Now, Obviously, I didn't sit there all night painting it. We do walk there in the evening. I have seen it by moonlight. But if I'm doing a real place, I prefer to do a little scribble, a little study, take that back to the studio, and then develop my idea of what I want it to be like. So then I'll start, you know, the creative process will begin. I'll start to make up the clouds and the sky, the reflections in the river, maybe embellish the trees a little bit. And this particular river, when it's very shallow, it has these beautiful rock formations that go across the riverbed. And they give off a lovely kind of shimmery effect. And I really wanted to capture that in this piece of work. And then you get these lovely ivies and mosses training over the bridge, wrapping around it. And each time we go, it's a little bit more overgrown, a little bit more run down, almost as though nature was kind of enveloping it, wrapping around it, taking it back, which I actually think is rather nice. Now, nature, its power, its energy, its beauty are obviously important aspects of my work, but also mythology and folklore too. I've always been fascinated by these old tales and I do incorporate them in, into my work sometimes. And I think my fascination is partly because the landscape features so strongly in them. So the landscape is often described as a character in its own right. And for me, I can really identify with that because for me, that's how I see the landscape. I see it as a character. You know, I don't see it as a, as a backdrop, a piece of scenery. I see it as the main character. And I want to capture it almost as though I was doing somebody's you know, somebody's portrait. Um, another lovely thing you come across in a lot of folklore 
are references to pathways, portals, gateways, hidden entrances into the landscape. And this is a, another thing that I find you know, very intriguing. And sometimes I, I will use these in my work, sometimes as a way of inviting the viewer in, in the same way that I use the, the circular motion. But other ways I will use them as the boundary, the doorway, the barrier between what's outside my work and what's within my work. And then sometimes I'll use the two together. So for example, in this piece of work, you have this lovely light sort of stony pathway inviting the viewer in, but then halfway in it turns into this very solid black tunnel. So not that inviting, almost as though it's a barrier, a boundary. And this piece of work, the very title, The Goblin Wood, goblins in mythology, folklore, not always the nicest of creatures, usually thought of as the slightly more aggressive, unpredictable, um, unreliable and friendly members of the Fey family. So perhaps not that inviting a picture. This one, on the other hand, I would say is a lot more inviting, even though I feel the piece of work is somewhat darker. But this time the river takes the place of the pathway, so the river invites the viewer in. And the, the arch of the bridge is almost like a portal, a gateway. But nothing untoward, so, you know, nothing to stop the viewer in this lovely light glittery water all the way around the corner. When I'm, I'm painting landscape, I'm always trying to capture, I'm not sure how best to describe it. I suppose the best way actually to describe it is to say the otherworldly side of the landscape, you know, the ethereal, more secret side. So there's the side of the landscape that we can see and then the hidden side that perhaps we can't see. And that's what I'm trying to capture, this otherworldly hidden side to the landscape. I'm actually very fond of both of these pieces of work and if someone said to me choose, I wouldn't be able to choose between them. And people do say that, you know, which is your favourite piece of work? I could never say. Um, I think as artists we love and hate our work for so many different reasons, you know, artistic, creative, sentimental, who knows. But I'm very fond of both of them. I hope that you like them too. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you again next time. Okay, bye bye.